Milan not good again. The curva uh, leaving sort of 15 mm. minutes uh, from the end. And a lot of people just not understanding Giampaolo at all. Um, no. And one particularly of them. the players, um, <laughs> which is a worry. And we all, sorry, I want to get your view mm. on this because see, me and I <laughs> grew up with Italian football, so like mm. we know the the John Paolo reputation. He's the kind of guy that people inside the game think, oh, he's such an original thinker. He's a bit odd because when he talks, he's mm. you odd. Know, he makes mm. Emmy look normal. No, actually, he doesn't. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but you know, he is a bit of a cold fish yeah. and whatever. But he'll make unusual decisions. But it tends to work. And he's so smart tactically, they said, and so. The belief was that this is the right guy for a team with a lot of younger players that could develop them. We've seen none of that. No. Can you get inside his head? I mean, I know you don't know him, mm -hmm. but you know you are a football coach. Mm -hmm. And, and you explain did what he's trying. What do you think? Like when he plays Shalom in the three, can you yeah. explain what he's trying to? Do? What What is it with this Piontek thing? Wh why Why does this dude have to play every game? What is it with? Su what makes you? What makes him think that Suzo is effective? playing in the hole. And what example. are all these changes you said because he's not finding what it is that he needs? Well, first, he, he started off, you know, at Sampdoria, he had great success with playing, and I, would, I always call it a diamond in midfield. People say it's uh, three in midfield with, a, with one behind a front two, but it's really a diamond, diamond in midfield. Yeah. So that you've got a holding midfield plan, two inside right and inside yeah. left. The problem is... Two Ramsey. Yeah, two Ramsey. <laughs> that's it, that's in the Palatici <laughs> world view. And, and somebody in the hole. The first of all, play, if you're going to play with somebody in the hole, you have to get the ball to him. Mm. You know, and they did that brilliant at Sampdoria. And they're not actually, when Suso goes in there, they're not actually getting the ball to him. And he's a player that's not quite so comfortable when he's receiving the ball with his back to goal. He likes being out on the right-hand side, receiving it, facing the defender. You know what he's going to do. He's going to run at the, at the outside of the defender and then chop it back onto his left foot and try and play into the front. That's where he feels comfortable. That's what he does at his very best. He's not able to do that when he's already so in there. Why and would you play him there instead mm -hmm. of, say... Paqueta, who yeah, has yeah. played that position before, yeah. Shalanoglu's played yeah. that position. I mean, I don't think either one is anything to write home about, frankly, but at least they that well, is well, the position that they actually play. I think there must be something that he likes Suso, because if he, if he plays that formation... Well, he plays obviously, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, not yeah, glutton yeah. for yeah. punishment. He's <laughs> not like so, so if, but if he plays... If he plays <laughs> He's not an interest player. Suso is not in the side because Suso can't play in the inside right and inside left positions because he's not good enough defensively. Beca and but that's the problem that he's also got. He's playing Chenanolu on the on the inside left position. If you're playing with a diamond, and we talked about it uh, with Juventus, the players in those wide areas have lots of work to do. You have to get up and go and support the front. You've got to cover your fullback. You've got to go and press the opposition's fullback. Okay. When the plays switch, you've got to get out. Right. It's the most Shalom energetic. Does not get around the and pitch he can't get yeah. And against Inter, he didn't even see the runs. Barella kept on playing it wide to um, uh, D'Ambrosio and then making a diagonal run. Right. D'Ambrosio would clip it around the corner and Chalanolu's uh, having to raise after him. Can, 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 can I make it easy for him? Mm. Like, if you're going to do that, Put Krunic and Kessie, either yeah. side of Benacer, yeah, yeah. Biglia can retire, yeah. Shalinoglu can go watch from the stands, yeah, yeah. and then Absolutely. that's one option. Mm. Uh, and then you can play Paqueta in the hole. What I would like to see, which I don't know if it's going to happen, I'd, I'd even consider going, if you're so obsessed with having that guy in the hole, mm. why not go for 2 3 1? Again, Kessie and mm. Benacer, or whatever mm. combination you want mm. in there. I still think Benacer, despite the two penalties he gave away mm. is, is an option. Play Paqueta in the hole where at least he's used to playing there. Rebic, not the biggest fan <laughs> there either, but whatever. Mm -hmm. You can play Rebic and Suzo wide that's what he did and play Leao the through yeah. the middle. That's what he did in the second or, half. Or if you have this Piontek obsession where this guy mm. needs to play even though he doesn't actually ever do anything, <laughs> play Piontek and you, you can play Leao wide. Mm. and then Well, you that's can what he did against... Into when they were struggling against Inter, he changed the system after 20 minutes and put Suso out on the right, and he put Leo out on the left, and he played Piontek up front, and he played, I can't think he played. Yeah, he's got a great goal against Juventus. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly so, so what you should do against a team that has no idea what it's doing. Keep changing them, so absolutely. He, so, so after so 20 minutes, he changed it because it wasn't working for him. So, and then he went back to the diamond. So at the moment, Would you he, wa he wants his... Uh, it's this obviously not point. working. The players aren't taking too much notice of him. The atmosphere and the body language that you can see amongst the... But that's also players. him. That's also yeah. him. His L looks, him looks terrible that. at the moment. The crowd are now baying for blood. This is only going to end one way. And you that's for Giampaolo getting the sack. You oh. think so? Because yeah. he, 
They played really well against Torino. Oh I my thought. God, it's one half. Mm. One half. We're talking about this one half. No, no, He's played how many halves? Be, Mina, when you go zero halves of mm. good football and then you Have Torino been good this half. season? Have Torino been good this season? Have you seen Torino play? They got smashed by Parma. I think you can play well. Mm. And execute well, regardless of what the opposition yeah. against you is. If they're better than you, don't beat you. But you can still. And we saw that I thought against Torino, but Fiorentina was just a, a complete collapse. Mm. You know, idiot Musacchio gets himself sent off. Yeah. Again. Because of course he's going to get you because he's frustrated. Much like Benesser, who was, who's. By the way, I do not agree with anything that's been handed to the Benesser or all the the horrendous things said about him. Can I just say something? When you have those types of tactics and you have so much space on the wings and no one's covering it, and you ask Benesser basically to do everything because Chananoglu just keeps giving the ball away, obviously you, you are going to start trying to be the hero, especially when Benesser is that kind of guy who's like a leader inside of him. I made this, uh, I, I made this comment earlier when we were talking that Marquisio under Prandelli 2012 in, in the Euros also got a red card because sometimes he got a red card, Benesser didn't, but he just gave away penalties because this is what happens. You get nervous, you get frustrated, and you're trying to do the job of too many men. He has no idea how to do balance. Now, people turn around and say this is not Giampaolo's fault. He hasn't been given all the help, and I agree with that. At the end of the day, this is a club being run by a vulture fund who is better at conducting business and, and, and handling banking issues than they are running a club. But what made you think that this is the right man to choose? A man whose win percentage is 39% or below, who's never managed more than ninth place in Serie A. So this isn't like a Gasparini who's going to come along and change your team around. He didn't do what, what Gasparini married, managed at Genoa or ever hit a European uh, spot. So this is one thing to consider. Maldini just makes it worse when he turns around and says, well, Saki also lost some games. Saki was playing under a management that was very well equipped. We had a great Galliani at the time, a, 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 a team that was already flying that could afford to take the risk of being in Saki. Firstly, Giampaolo is, is talking to a bunch of kids. So who would you have made the manager in the summer? I would have stuck with Gattuso, to be honest. Mm. I would have stuck with the simple sake that I cannot keep changing everything. We need a little is bit of talk stability. Is Gattuso going back there? Well, well, I don't think so. We should, we should specify Gattuso wasn't but just, sacked, just though. No. Gattuso walked, and he walked because he didn't feel that they were behind him. Mm. And they they did nothing to keep him, no. rightly in my opinion, not because mm. he's... Rightly? Yeah, because if you're trying to go and do something difficult, which is establish a brand, establish yep. a style of playing that works, develop younger players and not just go back to your mates who are older and whatever, you need somebody who's going to do that. You need, to, you need to have. Sorry. A, a, you need to have. I mean, you need to have an identity as a coach. You need to, your team to. So everybody can say, "Oh, that's a Gattuso team," or "That's uh, Ancelotti team," or "That's because they play a certain way and a certain brand of football." I, I just. I, and uh, the Gattuso, there wasn't a brand of. Okay, football. fine. I agree with you. Yeah, he's a pragmatist. Perhaps he's somebody who just you know plays uh, uh, plays off the cuff. Yeah, but explain to me this one thing. Yeah. You have, you are, are we talking about Milan, old Milan, who wins everything in Europe and are tremendous, or are we talking about this Milan, which is the Milan well, that's trying to, to make money? When, uh, because if you're I trying to make why. money... Sorry, Milan, what do you mean Milan are trying to make money? Milan are trying to, are trying to grow as a football club. They're not just trying to make money. You cannot afford right now to be a, 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 a team but that cares about your brand. Jean, but I think sorry, I just I one think second. Just sorry, but let me just, just finish this yeah. point. Yeah, just one thing. If you're a, a team that's trying to carry your brand, and I get that, and you think that Gattuso, you know, he's somebody who doesn't play a progressive style of football, but Milan's concern right now is to make top four, to start earning the money required. They cannot simply afford at this moment to have a manager who has a philosophy to play a, a brand and stylish football. They need stability. They need to just concentrate. They need to make top four or try to go as far as possible. Yeah. And yeah. then you can change what you like. Then you can be pretty. Then you can change. It's not, it's not about being it. pretty. Sorry. You don't, just because you say about an identity or a structure or a way you play football, doesn't mean to say it's pretty. It can be, it can be a great can be defensive. It can be, be a, yeah, like Atletico Madrid. It can be a structure that you can see taking place week in, week out. And you didn't see that under Gattuso? No, no, no they didn't have that with Gattuso. One I, point after... Yeah, but they, no, 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 I'm just talking about the point. I'm talking about, was there a structure to their play? So when I went, I commentated on them probably 50% uh, of their games. And from one game to the next, I wasn't quite sure how they were going to perform because okay. there was no structure. What Jean Palo, when I went to Sampdoria last year, many, many times particularly at home, there was a real structure to their play. And they destroyed Napoli. Remember at the beginning of the season, 3-0. They destroyed 
uh, AC Milan. I, I don't, I can't remember. It might have even got a draw AC Milan, but it was totally against the run of play. Or Biontech might have scored one of his early goals. Totally against the run of play. And I think the the Milan owners looked at that. There's a style of football that's caused us lots of problems. He's not got very good players, but they're doing quite well. And at home, you can see that the opposition don't quite know the hand. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.